Hi guys, here we are uh, just cruising in over Colorado in the uh, X737. A little noisy out here with the engines. Let's go into the cockpit. Okay, in the cockpit here, we're uh, just cruising along here. I wanted to show you some uh, progress on uh, the overhead panels that I was working on. First, let's take a look at the uh, AV, the uh, electrical meters that I showed you last week. Uh, thank, uh, thanks to uh, the author of the software, the X737, a genius actually, who did this. Uh, he and another guy, I think, did, but uh, I believe that Benedict was the He's been my primary contact, and I just requested that he create some data refs for the meters here. So now these do work. As you can see, I can change from the standby where there is no amps to uh, the battery, bu battery bus and then the battery, zero amps. The aux battery is not installed. You can see the TR1 and 2 have uh, loads, and TR3 does not have a load as, as long as uh, TR2 is operating. And uh, that's the, uh, the DC side. And on the AC side, we have standby power. You can see 114 volts and uh, 399 is the frequency there. And I can uh, go to uh, the uh, ground power, which obviously at uh, 20,000 feet isn't connected. Generator 1, the APU generator shut down. Generator 2, you can see 399 to 400 is the, the frequency. 115 volts, 75 amps, and then the uh, inverter. So that's been squared away. I tried to uh, find a similar font. I came close. I'll keep looking for the correct font. I see the threes are shaped and the nines are shaped slightly differently, but at least it gives you the dot matrix look. So that takes care of that panel. Another thing I worked on was a mode control panel for the autopilot. Uh, the mode control panel is probably, in my opinion, one of the uh, primary instruments that you use uh, when you're flying the airplane. And when we developed touch control for uh, X7 third for the uh, air manager, this was one of the first things I tried to build. Unfortunately, when I tried that, all the data refs had not been uh, coded for uh, X737. So here's what we have. I took some of the old graphics I had and adapted them and uh, came up with this, as you can see. Uh, everything operates. You can see turn the auto throttles off and on. We can of course do it with uh, do it here too. Uh, flight director off and on. Of course we we can control the uh, course speed. Heading. And we can also adjust the uh, the bank from uh, 10 degrees up to 30 degrees for the bank angle and the heading. And uh, altitude can be changed. Vertical speed. If we engage it, we can adjust that. There's an altitude and speed intervention button, a changeover button for Mach to uh, speed. Then we have uh, of course, the A command, the B command for the different channels. Control wheel steering, I don't believe, is activated yet, but there is an autopilot disconnect that we can use. And then, uh, of course, here's the flight director on the other side. Of course, with the master light. Um, turn the autopilot back on. Engage altitude hold. Heading select. And... Uh, Get a better angle here. Here to show you where where we are here. We'll go up here so so you can see out the window. And let's let's change the uh, heading. You can see the heading. Now this is touch control, and I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, but but uh, you can also use the scroll wheel to uh, increase or decrease any of these knobs. So if I put uh, let's say put 18,000 feet in and hit level change. The auto throttles on. You'll hear the power come back. 
the airplane will start descending at the idle thrust down to one flight level 180. Of course, the uh, local, the LNAV, VNAV, if you have the FMC, uh, that will work, and then VOR localizer in an approach button. Speed, to, just to uh, fly speed, and then the N1 button, which connects for the N1 limit. So there you go. That's uh, that's a nice little piece of equipment, and I'll show you in a little bit, uh, just a little flight demo with touch control, so you can see how nice this is compared to trying to fly with the mouse to be able to use your hands to fly the aircraft. So here you can see the uh, panel that I built. It's um, using a, a program called XHSI, which is a program that simulates all the glass displays uh, for X-Plane. You can see the uh, MCP, the motor control panel uh, that was installed that I demonstrated uh, before, and then there's several other ancillary panels that I uh, started. You can see, just touch the knob, touch the buttons, and spin the knobs. You can uh, set everything just as though uh, you were in the airplane. So you put touch the uh, center of the uh, dial, and then uh, take your finger outside the uh, dial and just rotate it around and uh, it works just like spinning a real dial. Now I made a little late turn there to the uh, localizer so we're overshooting and you can see where the, it's already off to our left. I'm going to re-intercept. So I set the heading there to uh, re-intercept and as we come back into that it will uh, I'll select uh, VORILS so that it intercepts the localizer. So there's VORILS. It's green and armed and it's uh, ready to intercept. And we'll, at the intercept angle here, we'll see that flight slope come back around. Now, slowing the speed a little bit there. Notice we have uh, flaps five and we're at. Uh, a good speed. You'll see that purple uh, localizer on the uh, navigation display come across. Setting a lower altitude and then selecting level change. As you can see that uh, localizer is almost centered up and when we center that it should turn to right to intercept. Now we haven't selected uh, glide slope yet. We'll do the uh, select approach here shortly. We could do that anytime we're on the inbound course here. And there's the capture. Slowing speed down just a little bit more. The flaps are now at 10. And there's approach, so we're ready. It's all armed up. There you can see the white uh, armed setting for the glide slope, which will turn green when we intercept. Set some auto brakes to about two there. And uh, you can see below the throttle quadrant that I uh, made is just shows the there's the uh, landing gear was in the up instead of the off position so put that back down where it should have been right after takeoff. Uh, on the right you can see there's trim, um, the um, throttles which is handy because it's nice to be able to see the throttle movement in the reversers manually as far and also the, the uh, speed brake deployment. Okay. Now we wait for the glide slope indication. That's the purple triangle. It's on the right side of the navigation display and also on the uh, right side of the uh, primary flight display. And when that comes down to about a dot and a half down is a good time to put the gear down. And as soon as the gear's down we can go to flaps 15. If we go to flaps 15 before the gear's extended we'll get the gear horn. It's very annoying. So we always wait for that. And then as the glide slope gets to about a half a dot um, we would uh, select the left flaps on down to uh, uh, landing flaps. In this case, we use flaps 30.
Now the other uh, screens haven't, the other instruments in this haven't been uh, modified yet to be updated. Only really in the uh, actually the uh, now there you see I had forgotten that I needed to uh, adjust the uh, the uh, wide wide angle uh, view on the uh, three visual displays, and that's done by taking the mouse and just grabbing the center pet center pedis or uh, window separator and just pushing that forward and backwards. Now you can see Atlanta Airport out ahead, and going to. Uh, Slow down a little bit more. Get the gear down, flaps 15. So we can set that back a bit. Flaps coming down now to uh, 25 and 30, in which case we'll uh, set our final bug speed, VREF. What I was going to say, the radios, uh, actually those radios are quite nice, put on another monitor, another touch monitor. As you can see, I have a touch monitor on the right, and I also have an overhead touch monitor. Now the uh, radios all function, and this, those are nice on a uh, iPad also, if you wanted to put those in a different location. Okay, so we have five green lights. We have the three green landing gear lights. We got the spoiler arm light and the uh, leading edge, the flap light. So everything's good for landing. And if we had our final landing check, it would be completed at this point. Now we'll wait till about 500 feet and disconnect the uh, autopilot and the auto throttles and fly manually for the last 500 feet. Of course, 737 can do an auto land. All centered up, glide slope, localizer. Runway looks clear. Looking at how flat that runway is, gives you a sense of uh, closure. And we're down. A little reverse thrust. Try to cancel that by about uh, 80 knots so that it's 60 or back down to idle, reverse idle. Little brakes and uh, Take this turn off. And we uh, flaps are coming up and we have to land a checklist. And there you go. Check back for more of this in the future and I'll be showing you more uh, videos. Sorry about the poor video quality. I'll try to see if I can't do better, but it's